Hoje o game desempenha até mesmo um papel cultural diferente do que a gente imagina. Os games hoje conquistam coisas como os celulares, que a gente leva para todo lugar, e também as redes sociais, tornando a experiência de jogar cada vez mais uma experiência social. Os games hoje vão muito além do entretenimento. Por exemplo, tem gente que acha que eles têm um impacto direto na educação. É o caso do James Portnoy, um cara que trabalhou, por exemplo, no desenvolvimento de jogos muito famosos como a série Call of Duty. Ele acha que existe uma coisa chamada aprendizado tangencial, em que os games são uma grande fonte de motivação, que aliás é uma mercadoria que anda em falta nas escolas do mundo todo, que podem ser usadas por professores e pelos alunos alunos como forma de descobrir temas que são de interesse educacional. If you think about it, 100 years ago, 150 years ago when we developed the system of education, life moved at a different pace. Today we've got our movies and our video games and our rock music and life just faster paced, more exciting, more engaging because we've had the money to spend Millions and billions of dollars researching how to make things more fun, more exciting. But we haven't brought that to school, we haven't brought that to work. Games can be used to encourage that sort of uh, more active, more passionate environment in school. Today, the key thing for students to me is to understand how to use information and uh, how to explore ideas with all the resources available with modern communication tools, um, it's not about getting the facts. Understanding what that means in the larger sense of society and world history, that's what's important. And games have this ability to really draw out what to explore and to understand in a more holistic way rather than simply memorizing of incidental facts. Do you think that maybe there is a problem of some people spend too much time with them, like they are somehow addictive? I don't think that anyone is addicted to music. I think that that's the wrong word. But compelled by them is probably a lot closer. Avalon did an experiment to see if you could get dogs to react a certain way to, um, uh, to stimulus. And he showed that you could condition a response. And unfortunately, a lot of these companies have taken all of his research and said, how do we condition human beings to come back and play our game every day? It's actually the exact same set of research that uh, slot machine makers use on slot machines. This to me is wrong. And so I'm hoping that for all the possibilities that social games have, uh, we take a step past and explore something deeper and more meaningful. Uma das grandes discussões de hoje é se os games são arte ou não. Para se ter uma ideia, enquanto as pessoas discutem, o National Endowment of the Arts, que é a principal instituição que apoia artistas nos Estados Unidos, decidiu que os games são sim arte. E dentro dessa discussão, é interessante ver que museus importantes, como o Whitney Museum aqui em Nova York, estão abrindo cada vez mais as suas portas para novos artistas que usam os games como matéria-prima para os seus trabalhos. And you could say that those illustrations were not art or an art form because they were serving a business purpose. In reality, they, they, just because they serve a business purpose doesn't mean that they're not an art form. When you look at some of the, the, the video that comes out of you know, high-end PC or console games, it's truly gorgeous and amazing. I think it's almost ridiculous to have a question. Is a particular game a work of art? Does it have artistic merit? Sure, that's a fine question, but that's like saying, is television art, or is film art, or is theater art? As a generalization, as a medium, of course they um, Of course, because in any of these movies, there's meaningful exploration and communication that can be done. We can look at our lives and provide some value. And the same is true of games. Os games são, na verdade, uma forma de contar histórias, de desenvolver narrativas. Se a gente olhar para o GTA ou para o L.A. Noir, 
eles mostram cidades como Nova York e Los Angeles de formas tão interessantes como o Scorsese, por exemplo, mostra cidades como Nova York nos seus filmes. O que vale lembrar é que, mesmo num game ultra violento, a força bruta não adianta. O que você precisa fazer é pensar com estratégia, que só assim você consegue vencer. It's not just playing, but it's, you know, solving that social human need. I think it's really fundamental to who we are. Right now, indie games are an easy target. It's like rap music back in the 80s or rock and roll back in the 40s. We have an easy scapegoat to point to um, in video games that allows our Christians to ignore the real societal ills that are behind a lot of these problems. If we uh, put more towards improving the well-being of our populace, uh, a lot of these things disappear. But it's much easier to say, oh, video games are evil than it is to really face these issues. Everyone loves video games, and cosplay is just a way to take it to the next level and really show your love for that character. There are certain people that always feel like they're the character, and cosplay is another outlet for people to live what they already feel. Don't look at it like it's weird because it's awesome and it's so much fun and if you haven't done it, you should try it.